Today we're going to make some geometric planters. I got a 2x6 from Home Depot and I just ran it through my thickness planers a few times just to flatten out the sides. If you don't have access to a planer, don't worry, you'll just have to do a little bit more sanding. I used my compound miter saw to cut the 2x6s to length. I drilled a pilot hole through the pieces of 2x6 so that I'll have a guide hole to drill large diameter holes using a hole saw. I then lined up the holes and glued the pieces together. I put a 40 grit belt on my Ryobi belt sander and just started pressing the block of wood to it to create the sort of geometric shape. I didn't sketch it out beforehand or anything, I just eyeballed it. Now, you could save a little bit on going through sanding belts by using the compound miter saw that kind of clipped the corners a little bit, but this was a lot of fun and I just let all the dust fly off my roof deck. The holes for the planter were a little bit rough, so I used a drum sander on my drill to clean them up a little bit. I sealed the wood with three coats of Minwax Polycrylic. Now I don't want the silicone to stick to the wood and the inside of the holes is still a little bit rough so I melted some soy candle wax and then poured the melted wax into the holes and then sort of rotated it around so that the holes would have a nice coating of wax and that way if anything sticks to them I can just hit it with a heat gun and the wax will melt and I can remove whatever stuck. Now the cool thing about this project is that the wood originals are not damaged in the silicone mold making process. So even if you stop right now you could have some really cool planters that are cheap and easy to make. But I want to take this a step farther and make some reusable molds for concrete. So I glued the wood originals down to a piece of melamine and then hot glued a melamine frame around them. I then mixed together some Mold Star 30. This is a silicone mold making material. It's a little bit on the pricey side, but you create really durable molds that you can use over and over and over again. Once the mold has cured, I just pried away the melamine and popped out the wood originals. A putty knife comes in handy for separating the wood originals that are glued down to the melamine. After rinsing out the molds, I then mixed up some Quick Creek countertop mix in white and filled the two smaller molds. Whenever I'm doing concrete projects, I always keep some extra molds around handy so that I can make some cool little magnets or stuff like that with the leftover mixed concrete. For the larger mold, I used Quickcrete 5000, which is a really versatile product, and it's only about $5 for an 80 pound bag. If you don't want air bubbles in your concrete, I recommend filling the molds about a third or half of the way up, and then hitting the sides of the mold really aggressively with an orbital sander without a sanding pad. This helps vibrate out all the air bubbles. Now I wanted to be efficient with the Mold Star 30, so I didn't use a whole lot of it, which means that the walls can bend out a little bit with the heavy concrete in them. So I just put some blocks of wood and some clamps, not to squeeze the mold, but just to keep the walls from bending out. After letting the concrete cure for two days, I popped them out of the molds. Jamie, who is the newest team member at Homemade Modern, picked out some succulents and placed them into the planters. Now for this first batch of the smaller white planters, we didn't vibrate the concrete that much, so there's a lot of air bubbles, which has kind of an interesting aesthetic. For the larger gray one that we use Quickcrete 5000 in, we vibrated it very thoroughly and there's almost no air bubbles. So far we've poured two sets of concrete planters in the same molds and the molds are holding up great. We'll continue to make them and we'll let you know how many batches we're able to create before the molds eventually tear or fail. For more detailed instructions, check out our website. And if you want to see what I'm working on next, be sure to follow me on Instagram. Check out some of our other videos, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks. Bye.